In this next tutorial, we'll start looking at how to rebalance the contrast of an image. Now, although every image is going to have different requirements, what you might find is that there's an overall way to approach images that does remain somewhat consistent, no matter what the corrections needed are for a shot. Now, as a reminder, our image is broken down into three tonal ranges, into shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we've got luminance controls for each of those. When we begin to adjust the contrast on an image, it's helpful to start in the shadow range. And I'm going to grab this luminance slider and drag left or right to look for exactly where I want to place the deepest black level. And setting the black level is a very crucial thing and is definitely helpful to set first. It's kind of like setting the anchor for your image. Now, just because there is an object in the frame that might appear black doesn't mean that things necessarily have to, have to hit the bottom of the scale and the waveform monitor. What you're looking for is just how deep or black you want things to look. Now, going back and forth is helpful because it allows you to keep your eyes refreshed. So as you drag back and forth, you're able to really kind of fine tune in on where that level should be. Now that you set your black level, we can move over to the gain control. So we set black first and then set highlights next. And by dragging up on gain, it appears as though I'm lightening the image, but we're looking for more than overall, is it brightening or darkening the image? What we're looking for overall is how high do we want the contrast to be? How much separation do we want there to be between black and white? So again, fine tuning gain might also be a process of dragging left and right to find just how extreme you want that contrast. Do you want it to be fairly high contrast and opened up pretty far, or do you want it to be somewhat low contrast and notice that the traces don't extend very far in the waveform monitor and the image itself feels somewhat soft. The contrast isn't as sharp and defined. It isn't as strong as it was when it's up here like this. So this is something that is definitely a choice. There is no hard rule one way or the other. The next thing though to determine while you're doing this is you're not only looking for what is the range of contrast, but you're also looking for what is the brightest white in the image. So if you go too far, you start to clip or flatten out highlight detail. And if you come down, you potentially regain that information. So you're looking for contrast and white level simultaneously. Once you've set the gain and previously set the lift, the shadows, you've now set the overall range of contrast for the image. The last step is to set the gamma, the midtones. And you can think of the gamma, if you're not going too extreme, think of adjusting the gamma left or right, in other words, a little lower or a little higher, um, as kind of like setting the exposure on the lens. It's kind of like setting the iris on the lens. You're overall getting what makes the image feel darker or lighter as you drag left or right. So adjusting the blacks and the whites wasn't really as much about making the image darker or lighter. It was more about how deep the blacks were, how white the whites were, and the range of contrast. And it was gamma that kind of sets the tone, that sets the mood. Is it kind of later in the day like it is now, or is it maybe a little brighter and a little bit more midday? So that's the idea behind setting lift first, gain second, and gamma third. In the next tutorial, we'll continue to look at various directions that we can take images by rebalancing contrast.